So uh, here's the, the photo from yesterday, um, the, the Tom Cruise photo, everybody can see that. One thing that you'll notice is that uh, from yesterday, I have cropped, this was a much more horizontal photo. Um, obviously I don't need all that extra stuff uh, that was on there. I, you know, so I'm basically just, I cropped it down so that we only have what is important. Now, one thing that we didn't do yesterday that we definitely need to do today is uh, we have to get rid of the um, background, okay? And there's a couple of cool ways that we can do it. Um, a couple of, you know, ways that are kind of, uh, they, they each, there's different ways to do it, but they all will provide or produce the same results. So one way to do it, okay, is to grab, and this is a little trickier, but it actually works really well if you don't have a, um, uh, a tablet or whatever. And that is by using your uh, polygonal lasso tool. And if you don't see it, your polygonal lasso tool is usually, or is under your lasso tool. There's a little arrow or triangle in the corner. So you click on it and you click on polygonal lasso tool. Now you might, I I'm gonna show you the difference between polygonal and magnetic. So what the magnetic lasso tool is, is it kind of will um, automatically snap to the border between two different values. So I'm gonna start right here, uh, down here in the corner, and I'm gonna start drawing out. I have, I clicked down once, okay? And now I'm just dragging my stylus, you know, I'm just dragging it up. So you can see where like, it's hard to see, but maybe right there it popped over a little bit, um, but it's doing a pretty good, it does a pretty good job, but the problem is when it gets, and I'm gonna kind of go fast, when it gets into areas where the darks are close, like you see, now it's having a problem. So if you can look, you'll see that um, it's kind of like going to the, uh, um, I guess, the next value up because it feels that the edge of his head is too close in tone to the shadow behind his head. So that the magnetic lasso tool doesn't always work well. In fact, if I can be honest, if Mr. Photoshop isn't listening, um, the magnetic lasso tool virtually never works well. So I'm going to hit Command D to deselect that. So I'm gonna go back to the polygonal lasso tool. And what that is, is I'm gonna go ahead and trace out the shape. I'll just do it real fast. So for example, that's kind of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna trace out his shape. However, I'm going to um, do it in such a way that it's a little closer than that. But remember, due to the nature of what we're doing, we don't have to have it exactly right. We just want it to be relatively smooth um, because you know they, all the details aren't gonna be there. We're kind of simplifying it. So I'm gonna start here in the corner and I'm clicking and dragging. So just for a second, I'm gonna say click when I, when I click down, click, 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 click and I'm going to draw around it, okay? Now again, I'm not gonna do this because I already have it done, but I'm not gonna do it as cleanly as I normally would, but this is not bad, it's pretty close. Now I'm not gonna worry about drawing every single hair. Ah, that's what happens sometimes, especially because I today I am using my uh, tablet. Yeah, the pen, for, it's, it's hard using the pen tool, but I want you to, to take a look at what happened. I accidentally clicked down twice and it closed it. So if you click once, you can go to the next point. But if you click down twice, which I think it's just because of the sensitivity of the Wacom, uh, it closed it up. But I don't have to start over because up here in the, in the top of the bar, the, the, the menu bar, I had the ability to do a regular polygonal uh, lasso tool, which means it's just gonna do the shape. But I can also, I have the, uh, the next one over, and if you mouse over it, it should give you the, uh, it should tell you, we can add to the selection. So now I'm gonna add to the selection. So now I don't have to start over. I'm just gonna click in here, and I'm just gonna continue drawing. Now I'm gonna have to fix the area over his shoulder where I first started, because that, as you can tell, is outside of the range of his, um, shape up oh, I just did it again but it's okay because I'm going to come down here and 
you know what? I'm going to switch to my mouse because this is a case where the mouse will be better. So, and I, I know that it's gonna be like a little confusing at first to figure out like where all these lines are. But you see, I added to that section. And now that means that I can add to this section as well to get the rest of what's missing. And now what I have to do is I have to subtract this chunk over his shoulder. So I'm gonna go back up here and the next one over is subtract from the selection. So I'm gonna click on that and now instead of clicking in here, I'm gonna click out here and get started. And I'm gonna take away what isn't part of Mr. Cruz here. Okay, so now I've got a relatively good selection, okay? Now I'm going to move my layers palette over here. You can see that I have a couple of demos and whatever of, of what I've done already. So this is a selection. Now, technically, if I were to hit the delete key right now, he would disappear, right? Yeah, Tom Cruise, bye-bye, exactly. Now, I could, I could say select inverse, and you're not going to have to do this, but selecting inverse turns it inside out and I could hit delete and I could get rid of the background. So that works. However, what if we want to non-destructively edit this photo? We can create what's called a mask, a layer mask. So I have to undo it so that we just have Mr. Cruz selected. And then I'm gonna come down to the bottom and we haven't done this. We're gonna come down to the bottom of my layers palette where we normally add a layer or delete a layer we're gonna hit this icon that looks kind of like a camera, but it, it's, a, it's a rectangle with a hole in the middle. So if I click add a layer mask, it's there, right? So now the layer mask is there, the background is still there, but we can't see it, which is exactly what we want. Now here's the cool part. If you look at this little pictogram icon right here, you see that it's white, with a black background. That's not just by accident. What Photoshop is telling you is that everything in the black area is going to be masked and everything in the white area is going to be visible. So let's look at this ear and, and cheek and all this other stuff. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. That's probably a little too rough for me. That's a little too angular. So what is cool is I can take and I'm going to click on the mask. Now, you're not going to really see anything. Nothing's going to change. But watch what happens when I click on the mask versus when I click on the photo. See, there's like a little white box that kind of pops up around it. So I'm going to click on the mask. And you see the little white box. And what that means is I can now come into this picture. And using my paintbrush, if I... Uh, grab my paintbrush, and if my color is black, my foreground color, I can literally paint over this and smooth it out. And if I don't like it, I can, um, for example, let's just say I wanted to show more, like if I accidentally, uh, like up here, if I wanted to show more of his hair. Well, if I change my paintbrush to white and I start painting, we can see more, right? And it's hard to tell, but the little graphic does change in here. But again, if I change it back to black, and that's how like, for example, if I did wanna show like little hairs and things like that, I could do something like that. That looks awful, but you get the idea, okay? So using the mask, that's, um, you know, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to switch it back to white. And I'm going to come back and just kind of do this. Now I'm going to go back to black, get rid of this stuff out here. And let me see if there's anything else. Like maybe that part of his neck was a little off. Uh, ooh, that's definitely off.
Now, you can see I cut a little bit into his, his cheek there. So I'm gonna go paint it white like that. Now, while we've got this, um, while we've got this active, so that will show you exactly what we've got. That is our thing. So actually I was doing that because I was looking and I do have some flyaways right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to my paintbrush and cover those up just so I don't have any problems later on. In fact, it looks like I missed a section right here. Okay, so I'm done with that. So now if I click back on the picture, now if I go in uh, and I go to my, like yesterday, we went to filter, filter gallery. And of course, I already applied it earlier today, but so if we go to uh, filter, filter gallery down here, and it's on the other screen, I have to pull it in. that will allow me to do the effects. And as you saw just a second ago, it is applying the effect to the whole picture. You know, that's, you know, that's what it's doing. However, it's not, um, it's, we're only gonna see what is through the mask. So I'm gonna show you the other way to do it. So that's one way by clicking, 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 clicking and drawing around it. The other way that we can do it is, I don't have to, I, I think I don't have a plain one anymore. So let me grab this and duplicate this layer. I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna get rid of this mask. By the way, here's the, the quick and easy way to get rid of the mask. Normally on your palette, you got layers and then next to it is channels. And you can see channels, we're in an RGB document. So that means there's a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel, right? And the mask channel. So when I have this layer selected, uh, when I hit the channels, I can delete the mask layer and it's only gonna delete it from this layer. So if I go back to layers, I still have the, the masks on all my other layers. So there's that. But anyways, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hit this layer and I'm gonna create a mask. Didn't do anything. But remember, whatever's white is going to be showing, right? So again, the little box is around the picture. Now the little white box is around the mask. And that means if I take my paintbrush with black, and I'm going to just make it kind of large so we can go through it quickly, I can paint around what I don't want. And you can see over here that it's showing up. The mask is showing up. So, and I'm not destructively deleting it. It's still there. Now, obviously you probably wouldn't want to use a fuzzy paintbrush like I'm doing right here, but you get the idea that you can paint and create your own mask. And a lot of times this is what people want to do or use this masking technique for things like hair um, and things that are more naturalistic because it's hard to, um, click and drag and click and drag and click and drag and get all the, uh, uh, the, the pieces of hair out. So anyways, that's the second way to do it. So whatever works best for you. Personally, I think the, the polygon lasso tool for this project works really well because you can quickly define the area and then go back in and edit your mask by clicking on the mask layer. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I'm gonna go back to here and see what we got. So I'm gonna mess with this layer and I'm gonna do the filter. So now I've masked it. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna adjust um, and make the, the uh, cutout filter that we did yesterday. So with this correct layer selected, I'm gonna go filter, filter gallery. I'm going to go to cutout. I'm gonna zoom out so we can see it a little better. Now, because I, remember, I messed with this already, but um, I'm gonna, you know, I can adjust the number of levels. The thing that I'm watching for, like I mentioned yesterday, is the area around the eyes. I mean, look, if I go from six levels 
and I know technically you say, well, you know, there's only what four colors in the whole thing, but you'll see why. Because if I go to from six levels to five, just one layer down or, or one level down, I completely lose his eye over here. So I kind of am forced to be up here at layer, I mean, uh, level six. Edge simplicity, as you remember, we can make it really simple, uh, which looks like modern art. Or, you know, we can keep moving down to basically the smaller the number, the more accurate it is to the photo. Um, so you're probably going to want to be like in maybe the one to two range. Uh, three is okay. Yeah, I'm going to stick with two this time. And the edge fidelity means basically how close it is to, um, it tries to match the, um, the delineation between the different colors. So I'm just, I'm gonna keep that at one usually. So that's okay. So I'm gonna say okay. And now uh, this is pretty much what I want. So for right now, we're pretty much done in Photoshop. So from this step forward, we're going to be in Illustrator, okay? So I'm gonna file save this as, and I'll call it Tom Cruise 2 because I already did a Tom Cruise 1. And I'm saving it as Photoshop, and that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hide Photoshop. Wait a minute. This was on the other window. It was right behind you guys. So I'm going to say OK. So I'm pretty much done with Photoshop, so I can go Photoshop, hide Photoshop. I could close it. I could whatever. So what I'm giving you guys is this template, okay? And in this template, I'm going to kind of try to move it so you can see everything. What we've got are, we've got our, a bunch of layers and the visibility is on, but if I turn the visib visibility on everything, you'll see that I have included the original, the, the, the reference, because this is what you're shooting for. You want this level of smoothness and color transition and all that stuff. We also have a text layer, which is right here. I'm going to turn that off because we don't need it. We have the bar. We have the red. And then if we look at the red, underneath the red is the middle blue. And underneath this uh, middle blue and red is the lines texture. So that's pretty much everything that you need. And of course, we've got the base yellow color. Now I'll be honest, like from this point on, oh, and I also have um, uh, swatches of the colors over here so that you can select them and use them. So from this point on, it's really going to rely on your artistic ability. Because if, if you just stop and don't make everything smooth uh, and all that stuff, it's going to look like the bad examples I showed you yesterday. So let's go ahead and bring this in or bring that Tom Cruise picture into this. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lock all these layers, just like in Photoshop, I can lock them in that way, I'm not gonna mess with it. However, I have to create a new layer. That's the one thing you guys are gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to create a new layer because it won't let me place something into a locked layer. So now I've got a blank layer and I'm gonna double click it and call it Tom. By the way, fun, fun little trivia thing. Uh, Tom Cruise, doesn't that sound like a movie star name? Like he must have changed his name. That's actually his birth name. His name is like Thomas Maypother Cruise. It's like he couldn't be anything but a movie star with that name. That's like, hi, my name is Jack Steele. I'm like nobody's name is that. So anyways, so I'm gonna bring that picture in. So I'm gonna go file, place. I'm on the Tom layer, file, place. And let's see, uh, that is in my untitled folder because I didn't take time to save it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring in my Tom Cruise one, which is what I did earlier. And my cursor is loaded and I'm gonna place it and spoiler alert, it's gonna be too big. So there we go. So what I have to do in Illustrator, I do have to hold down the shift key and I wanna scale it down. I want it to fit uh, in this area. <clears throat> hey, hey, Tom, that's Tom Cruise on Jupiter. It's kind of an astronomy joke because Jupiter is huge. It has super heavy gravity, all that kind of stuff. 
So let's see. And I'm just gonna make it fit like this. Now I know <clears throat> I'm gonna have to get rid of some of his shoulders. That's not a problem. And I'm gonna put it kind of here. And if I want to, I can go ahead and uh, turn on my reference so I can get it kind of in the same sort of position. You know, maybe something like that. Gosh, they're like brothers. So anyways, now what I can do is I have this photo. Right now, I can't do anything to it really in Illustrator other than resize it. Illustrator just sees this as a photo. So what I wanna do is I want to have Illustrator trace over this for me. And we've gone over this before with the image trace. So I'm gonna open up my window, image trace. And here it is right over here. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to press the preview. Now, by the way, you have to have the image selected. So it has to be there. So I'm going to preview it. And that's what it's gonna give me if I tell it to be black and white. I don't want it to be black and white. And when I say black and white in Illustrator, that means it is either black or white. There's no middle ground. So I'm gonna to go to grayscale, no need to make it color. <clears throat> and you'll see that it draws through. Now it is, it's going through a lot because it's, it's interpreting all of those different values in that picture and all the different areas. So it'll take a second. And if you're doing your Windows Virtual Desktop, it might take a second, but it still should work relatively quickly. So here we go with the grays. <clears throat> and that looks pretty good because even though I, even though it says like the, the number of grays is 50, um, there weren't 50 grays in the picture to begin with, right? Because I had already done the cutout. So that's fine. So I'm done with the image trace. Uh, well, let me just show you. I could, if we squished it down to like three grays or one, one's not gonna be good, but we'll see. So even though it says one, there's still gonna be a couple of different levels of gray. But again, I've lost his eye, so I don't want that. So I'm just gonna go up, back up to the default of 50 and let that run through. Now the next step that I'm gonna show you is something we haven't done in Illustrator either. So make sure you're paying close attention. So I've got this and uh, actually I see a few problems up here, but I'm gonna let it go because I can get rid of them manually. So yes, I've uh, created a vector graphic, but what I wanna do now is I wanna go object expand, okay? And expanding it is going to separate everything from each other. It's gonna turn it into separate uh, shapes. And there we go. So we got our separate shapes there. It looks like a total nightmare, but it works. If I click off, it's, it's gonna look this, like the same. Now, one thing that we haven't played with in Illustrator is Illustrator also has a magic wand tool, just like in Photoshop, where it will select different areas of, uh, this, of similar value. It's usually not on your toolbar. Um, on your toolbar in Illustrator, just like in Photoshop, these three dots, if you click on them, it will show you the other tools, and there's a lot that are available that you might not be, that might not be on your toolbar right now. And if I wanted to, I could click and drag these tools under other tools. So for example, if I knew that I wanted to use the bloat tool a lot, um, I could put it up under maybe something that was relatively relevant, maybe like the hmm, shape builder tool or something like that. But that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is the magic wand tool. And I think I might have put it, let me just double check. I might have put it on there earlier. Where is it? Should be under select. Huh. Maybe I did move it earlier today, but you'll find it over there. But the main thing is we don't use the magic wand tool very often, right? So 
and you might want to write this down in Illustrator to get the magic wand tool, you just have to press the Y key on your keyboard because the letter Y is in magic wand. Magic wand starts with the letter Y, so that makes sense. Hey, I don't make the programs, I just use them. And so what that means is I can click on the white, the white, and then I can hit, I selected the white, I can delete it. Now I've gotten rid of all of the white in the picture, which I don't need. I mean, the white's gonna be just covering up the colors and stuff. The other thing that I can do is because all of my other layers are locked, I can select Mr. Cruz here and I can grab my eraser tool and I can erase the parts that are on the outside, okay? Now, if you wanna do a straight line erase, and this is a little hard because I've got kind of a big brush, but if you hold down the shift key and then uh, start erasing, it should be relatively straight. So that side was easy, but what about this side over here? It's kind of larger. So I'm gonna start kind of up here. I'm gonna try to, I'm lining it up as you, I don't know if you can tell, but with the red and remember, it's only gonna erase what is selected and that's gonna be really important later. So I'm gonna kind of put it kind of where I want it to be and then hold down the shift key. And I should, if I hold down the shift key at the right time, be able to get a straight line and then I can erase this. Obvi, I can see that uh, my um, placement was a little wrong. Okay, so now we've got kind of what we want. And, and you can see, look, I deleted the white. There's uh, the color showing through on his nose. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my reference layer visible because from here on out, I wanna make sure that I'm following stylistically what I've got. So I am going to click on Tom and you'll see that when I click on any one part of him, everything else gets selected, right? So the next thing that I need to do is I need to go object um, ungroup because it's, it's grouped together. So I'm gonna go object ungroup and I'm gonna click on it again and it still selects everything because what Illustrator did is it made a group of a group of a group kind of. So I'm gonna go object ungroup again, click off and see if I've got it, object ungroup. Now, I'm there. Okay, so let's say for example, I want to, and remember this is, this, these areas are, uh, you know, what, how we're gonna start defining the color. Well, uh, you know what, I'm gonna pick this area right here and I'm gonna select it with my regular selection tool because it's ungrouped, I can select just that and I can say, grab my paint, I mean, my eyedropper while it's selected and click on this swatch. And now it's gonna be that color. So for example, if I want this shade of gray to be the red, I have selected it. And I can use my paint brush, I'm oh, sorry, stupid, my eyedropper tool and then select my red swatch. And so now that's ha happening. And by the way, I'll turn off these other layers. So we're just seeing uh, Tom in the background. Now, the other thing that I probably want to do, and this is where it gets, it's your, this is going to like depend on your, uh, you know, how your colors are set up and how your drawing is traced. I'm going to work on this kind of like value right here. So I think this should be like the, the majority color of his face, right? So I'm going to grab that and use my uh, eyedropper tool and select the yellow. Now, technically, if I had, <clears throat> if I had just deleted this shape, let me turn on my red, for example. <clears throat> so if I delete the shape, the red would show through because there's nothing there, right? <clears throat> but for what we're doing, we want it to we want it to be there. Sorry, doing a lot of talking this morning. So 
Um, I could go through and uh, work on some of the other stuff, <clears throat> but let's take this. Let's say that I want this shape. Again, it's rough. It in no way is as smooth as that. So I've got this shape selected, right? And we have our brushes over here. We have a brush tool, but we also have a blob brush tool. So with my yellow or cream color selected, uh, I may have to make my brush smaller. In fact, I know I'm gonna have to. But with the blob brush selected, I can start to do this. and smooth that shape out. Now, granted, I could also, um, I could also delete each of these points, but why do that? I'm gonna double click on the blob brush tool and make it smaller. Come back, smooth some of this stuff out. And you can do this with the mouse or not. Now the other thing that I can do is, um, oh, that's on a different layer. The other thing that I can do is if I don't like the outside of it while it's selected, if I grab my eraser, you know, I can do that. Now what's happening, and this is where it gets a little confusing, if I turn off that base yellow, because it looked like, I mean, for a second there, it looked like, hey, you erase that and uh, it's still messed up. It's because that base yellow is there. And, um, you know, that's why, and so that when I turn it off, you can see that there's white. So I'm gonna go back to my blob brush tool. I'm just going to simplify it a little bit. And if I want to, I can go ahead and delete these dots. Remember, when you're using your direct selection tool, I'm sorry, I should have pointed that out. Um, you can delete like little sections, or if you grab your uh, selection tool, you can delete the whole thing at once. So I see that there's a hole in there for his um, wrinkles, I guess. And I can leave those in there if I want to. Uh, for now, because what I, what I would have to do is have another color under it or um, a shape on top of it, but I'm going to leave it there. So same sort of thing is what I'm going to do with the red. Uh, now that I've selected the red color, I can pick my blob brush tool, can start to smooth that out. So this is where it is going to take a little time. And that's why we keep our uh, reference thing open so we can keep an idea of like how simple it is. Now the red in this case is under this other color layer. So we could do one of two things. We could move this layer to the back by, I mean, move this color to the back by selecting going object, arrange, send to back. And now the red is on top of it. So I can go back to my red blob brush and do that. And again, I can pick this value, make it that blue. Um, I could pick, I'm gonna have to zoom in a little bit. Uh, I can delete that shape, or if I want to, I can just go to town. I can also, uh, well, <clears throat> let's say I wanted to select several different things and change it. I could do that, but that's going to be a pretty big shape there. So if I don't want some of these shapes in here, if I don't want that one, <clears throat> I can just delete it. You'll see, of course, that parts of it are, dis I mean, there's going to be holes in there. And there's two ways to get rid of that. <clears throat> one, I can just grab the shape and then use the blob brush tool, cover them up. That's one way. Or two, I can grab the direct selection tool because what this white area is, is a hole in the shape. So if I uh, select the direct selection tool and grab one point, 
I can hit delete, delete, and get rid of it. So you can fill it in with the blob brush tool or use your direct selection tool and just delete them. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So all that is really self-explanatory. Like if I think this, you know, but if, if I don't like that on his cheek, if I don't think he needs it, you see it goes all the way over here. So I can't delete it, but I can erase it, the parts I don't want. And then I'll just have to go back in um, and fill in the shapes. But here's the thing I wanna show you guys. <clears throat> all that is easy. It's just a matter of adjusting, you know, and smoothing and all that kind of stuff. The tough part, or at least the more interesting part, is the lines. How are we going to get the lines? Okay. Now, the way that we're going to do the lines is I am going to, okay, now right now the line texture is invisible. Okay. And I'm going to turn it back on. So I'm not going to do anything to the line layer. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to, you know, do anything like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on. Well, let's see. I think in this case, this where it does take, oh, well, you can kind of see what's happening right there. So let me zoom in. Because remember, I deleted that, uh, that color. So when I deleted the color, it's left a white space. There's nothing there. So when I turn on the lines texture, you can see there it is. So again, if I turn on the yellow behind it, that's what we would have. So what that means is, and I'm gonna look over at Obama. So we've got lines <clears throat> and then the solid color. So we got lines in the solid color. So the only thing in this case on the face that is keeping those lines from being visible is this shape right here. So I am going to select this shape, grab my eraser tool. It's probably a little big, but we'll see. And do that. So now you've got it. The lines are showing through. So for example, let's go back. I'm gonna select this shape again, which goes all the way over here. But what about this shape? Um, if I select this shape and use the eraser, I'll have some lines over there and so forth and so on. And so, for example, if I deleted that, we'd see more lines. And if I took this, and change the color to that, that's what it would be looking like, okay? Now, the other thing is, it's I haven't defined the side of his face, so I'm going to um, turn on this middle blue layer. Now, the middle blue layer just wiped out because the middle blue layer is above the lines, right? So what I need to do is be on the middle blue layer, select it, select the middle, oh, I have to unlock it. Select the middle blue rectangle. And remember, because it's selected, if I use my eraser, it's gonna cut through it, right? So what I wanna do is basically erase that blue uh, rectangle area that's behind his face, something like this. And that will enable those lines to show through. And if I don't want those lines, well, actually I do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play with this. And maybe, hmm. I don't like that. This is still too rough in here, but I'm just doing it to show it to you. Okay. Now you can say, hey, Mr. T, he looks kind of like a monster there, right? So we might want to have uh, a paintbrush. I'm gonna use my regular paintbrush and I'm gonna be, I'll be up here on the, on the Tom layer and maybe, oop, that paintbrush is not good. 
smooth. Okay, let me go to my brush library. Take a simple brush. Whoops, not while that's selected. I'm going to click off, grab my paintbrush, click on this. So I'm just saying, like, if you wanted to add sections, now obviously I have to fix the red. I can move it above it um, like that. I can grab my blob brush tool and touch up the red. So until it looks right. But basically, it's just a process. <laughs> 